you guys doing well this afternoon? Go ahead, take a stretch real quick. Go ahead, clap, stretch, whatever you're doing. I was thinking about this chair. I don't have enough faith for that chair. <laughs> chair was made for skinny white men, not large Suge Knight types. So we're going to leave that there. Um, uh, it's an honor to be here. And when I think of unpolished, I think of myself uh, because there, I am the un in the polished. Uh, you know, you've got Brian Tome, who's one of uh, the great leaders in the body of Christ and in the marketplace. And I'm so grateful for his vision, vision of the team and everybody connected. And then you've got like John Maxwell. And then you just had the guy from Modern Family out here on the panel, uh, Kirk Perry. He looks just like that guy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I want your autograph. No? Okay. But, uh, you know, when, when you think about the intersection of faith and business, particularly in a time of secular humanism and moral relativism, the fact that you're here is miraculous, if I'm allowed to say such words in such a unique time uh, in the history of our nation with markets fluctuating uh, particularly with our currency, which is a fiat currency. And of all the countries that have ever had a fiat currency, all of them have failed except for one, and it is the United States. So we are prayerfully going to be the anomaly in a system that has historically not done well. The reason why I bring up the type of currency that uh, we use in the United States is because if that is the only thing that we're going after, we're going to miss why God put us here in the first place. I believe as business leaders, business owners, as those who are entrepreneurs, for me, I was trying to think about what could I add a value to this conversation, to this dialogue, uh, because clearly I didn't, you know, I don't have the same resume as some of my other esteemed colleagues, but I do have a little bit of wisdom in some areas but whatever I do have, I must defer it all to Jesus. And I believe that he is the only reason that I have been able to have any modicum of success uh, in any area of my life. When I left Cincinnati, I was uh, 22 years old then. I had hair, and um, that was 21 years ago. And I went on to travel with what would become the most successful gospel artist of all time. He sold over 11 million records. We've won Grammys. We've had songs with Bono from U2. Nobody else in here can say that. Me and Bono. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and I still haven't found what I'm looking for. That's all you get. That's all you get. Wasn't even a part of registration. When I think about leadership, when I think about marketplace ministry, when I think about uh, this place of developing core competencies, I think about Jesus and I think about how he built his team, his squad. And if it's okay, I'd like to grab a scripture from Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five. I want to talk to you for a few minutes from the subject, nothing but nets, nothing but nets. Luke chapter five. And here's a scripture. So, so it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. 
For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish with the, which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And I think for me, uh, everything that I do when it comes to the business that I'm in, because uh, as my brother said, I'm the associate teaching pastor at Lakewood Church. But on the other side of that, I have my own business. And a part of that business is film production, uh, music production, television, things of that nature. And we've done some award-winning films. We have other films that are coming into the marketplace. And every project that I do now, I don't look at it from a cost standpoint but from a personal testimony standpoint. The reason why is because as a believer, everything that I do has to filter through my core values. Everything that I do has to filter through what I believe about life and what I believe about the marketplace. And anything I can say about Jesus, he always has been and always will be about people. And if we find ourselves fighting to bring to the marketplace uh, whether it's projects or goods or services that actually meet and reach the needs, not just of the external aspects of people, but deep down in the core part of their soul, because there's so many uh, empty, empty Christians. And what I mean by that is empty lives. We have um, the empty calories of what looks like a great life, but on the inside, we're still hollow. On the inside, we're still searching for value and meaning. And if we as believers are going to really affect the marketplace, then we need to come with substance beyond an external touch. We need to have something on the inside. And if there was anybody who knew how to touch the inside and reach the core of a person, it was Jesus. In this story, we see Jesus teaching. He's on the edge of the lake. He observes two boats near the lake. Now, fishing had already been done. It's past early morning. Everybody else is already in. These were the last two boats to come in. This is significant because Jesus was getting ready to build his team. By the way, there's no better CEO than Jesus because his organization is still flourishing and growing and it's multinational and it's multi-denominational and it's multi-generational. And I know we're business folk, but we can give God a praise for about three seconds. On your market set, go. Three, two, one. You know, I grew up in church like, Jesus, you're my savior and you're my Lord. He's like, I'm also the CEO. I run things straight out of Nazareth. All right. Um, <laughs> thug Jesus. Anyway, um, Jesus is teaching, but he realizes in order to fulfill the vision that he has been given, he's going to need team members. For me, this is significant because I have a vision God gave me, and it's like my baby, and I don't want to just hand my baby to people who, who won't be as passionate about it. Jesus identifies two boats that had come in late, and while he's teaching, he ends up going over to one of the boats and sitting in the boat, and he asks Simon, go on and stretch out in the water. These people are crowding me. Let me preach from the water. So the people are on the edge of the shore. Jesus is teaching and Simon's just in the boat. He's like, man, it's been a long time. Who is this dude? He just in my boat. You didn't ask. No permission, just sitting in here. But I can't say nothing because you got these folks' attention. And so he's teaching. After the crowd, is like, oh, that's amazing. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Jesus then turns to Simon and he says, yo, man, let's go fishing. Simon's like, hold on, wait, just hold on. Okay, I've been fishing all night. Okay. I know you're the rabbi. We heard about you. We know we heard about you. We know you, Mr. Walk on Water, Mr. Stretch Out the Withered Hand. I know we, you, you got a nice little reputation building. You are the carpenter's son. I know about you, 
but I'm a fisherman. This is what I do. This is my core competency. This is what I am skilled in. You don't know nothing about this. You don't know nothing about this boat. You don't know nothing about these nets. You don't know that. All you know is that little carpenter's whittle knife and whatever you do with your little beard and your brown sandals, you don't know nothing about this over here. Holla at your boy. Jesus hitting with the British accent like the black lady that just left. <laughs> Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. I believe that this, <laughs> this conference is going to stretch some folk in here to lay down your corporate wisdom and your book knowledge in exchange for something beyond your comprehension. I feel it in here. Yeah, you know, y'all can shout at me. I, I, I'm cool with that. Some of you are like, I'm not familiar. What do I do right now? Is this a motivational? No, I'm not a lecturer. I'm a preacher. You can shout at me. I know that's right. Ha <laughs> ha, say that. You can do all of that for the next 12 minutes. I'm going to do my best. By the way, shout out to whoever's in the green room hooking it up because I saw some fruit and vegetables, but that was not for me. Somebody blessed me with La Rosa's. God is going to give you an extra mansion in heaven for that. I am not a celery type dude. We got some broccoli. Don't bring no broccoli over here. Where is whatever used to be alive and is now dead? Bring that to me. <laughs> Let us kill the fatted calf. All right. <laughs> what we have right now are great ideas. There is no shortage of ideas. Natural human intellect can only go so far. What God is looking for is some people who he can partner with, that he can put his super on top of your natural. Is there anybody here willing to partner with God with the idea that he gave you? Because I'm a firm believer that every individual that's here right now, and if you're listening later, may I refer you to Isaiah 55 that says, For as the rain comes down from heaven and the snow and do not return there, but it makes bring forth and bud that it would give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that flows forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that for which I sent it. May I offer to you a possibility that you are not living an accidental life. You are not just a product of a romantic interlude between mom and dad. You are not an accident that happened to get through. You are here because you were purposed to be here. There are no accidental lives. You cannot sneak into the earth. You must be spoken into the earth. I look at someone like Brian Tome and I think in my imagination that God was looking over the landscape of the earth and when God speaks, he always speaks in the language of solutions. When God speaks, he speaks in the language of solutions. Here's my example. God's looking at the earth. He realizes that there's going to be a need for a certain type of leader at a particular point in time. And it had always been in the mind of God. But when God saw the landscape of the earth, the idea went from the mind of God to the mouth of God. Because we learn in Genesis that when God speaks, it has to come to pass. And so God at one point said, Brian Tome. And the egg and the seed connected. He grew in his mother's womb. And he was birthed on the day that he came into the earth because he had to get here because he carried a solution as a catalyst to awaken a generation and bring the areas of faith and business and commerce and hands and feet of Jesus in a fresh way that we had never seen. And he brings it to, of all cities, Cincinnati, Ohio. What an amazing anomaly. This is what God wants to do, to take someone who is great on their own, but then he puts his hand on it, and the, the super mixed with the natural can change a generation. Jesus is looking for some people to partner with. He wants to come hang out in your boat. <laughs> Somebody like, well, I, I got some beer in the boat. He's, he's cool. 
He's cool. <laughs> he can turn water to wine. He's not tripping on, on the beer on your boat. I got a little bag or something now. Now, he might trip on a little bag. I don't, <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know what he would do with that. Yes, I do. He wouldn't do it. I don't think. Um, <laughs> Jesus says, Simon, do me a favor. Launch out into the deep. Simon's like, you don't understand. I've already been out here all night. How many people have an idea you've been working on it, but it's not exactly where you might want it to be? Maybe there's a hope, a dream. Nine of us, the rest of you are perfectly successful. Please leave. I'm depressed. You see it again. How many people are saying, you know what? I'd like to see my business go to the next level. The idea that I have go to the next dimension. Guess what? There are times when Jesus is going to bring you to the end of yourself, and then he's going to tell you to do something that makes no sense. It's called faith. And it's not faith if you can see it. And so as leaders and those who are alpha, because many of us in here, we're, you know, we do what we do and people count on us. But Jesus says, I don't even come from that world. I'm, I'm a carpenter. I'm a, I'm a little rabbi, but trust me on this. You want to go out. Simon says, all of my training tells me there's no fish out there. But because of the way you commanded that crowd, I'm going to trust you. But I ain't bringing both of these nets. I'm going to just let down one net. Jesus is like, all right, you're going to mess up. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm the savior of the world. <laughs> what I love is why Jesus chose Simon in the first place. Fishermen. Why would Jesus choose fishermen to build his church around? I mean, clearly there were other teachers and there were rabbis and there were all these learned scholars who knew the law. And Jesus said, I don't want any stuffed shirts hanging with me. I want people who would be willing to get their hands dirty. Some folk that have been up all night, still caught nothing. And here's the key. Jesus said they were, the Bible says they were washing their nets. You know what that is? Hope. You don't wash nets unless you're going to go back out the next day. And let me speak to you as a leader and as an entrepreneur that if it doesn't work out today, wash that net. Get up tomorrow. If the organization is not moving like you want it to, wash the net. Get up tomorrow. Jesus observed the behavior of those who had caught nothing, and they were like, it doesn't matter that it didn't work out today. I'm going to be right back out here on this lake, and I'm coming back out here until I catch something. This is the mindset that we must have. We are not simply a capitalistic society. We are also a theocratic society. We are under a different government because the Bible says the government will be upon his shoulders, and of his kingdom there will be no end. I do not want to live a life that is only about the bottom line and if I'm in the red or if I'm in the black I want to know that I'm constantly in the red and the red in this case means the blood of Jesus and the will of the father I was not created for myself I was created as an extension of God's heart and I want to use my gifts to bring his heart into the earth hey are both of these waters mine well, this one's open, but I trust you, Brian. We're family. No? <laughs> like I said, I'm leaving that right there. I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> Somebody say nothing but nets. Are you willing to lay down what you're good at for what Jesus is great at? Not sure what. Oh, thank you, ma'am. You just had that in your purse. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Always a black church mother somewhere. I got some water. I got some ribs in here. Um, what else? Her business is going to flourish. She's always prepared. <laughs> she pulled it. What you want, baby? I got right here. That's right. You need a mint. I got that too. Somebody say nothing but nets. Simon was an expert in his chosen field. And here comes Jesus telling him to do something outside of his character, outside of the norm. So he goes out, 
all of a sudden, the fish he couldn't find all night start rushing to his net. Can I tell you prophetically that of all the people that were sent here to speak into you, I believe I was simply here as an example of the supernatural hand of God, that if you listen to the voice of God as it pertains to the calling or the gift or the business or the thing that you are a part of, you will see it flourish. And am I telling you to preach in the break room? No, that's weird. Don't be creepy while people are eating tuna. I saw people outside having tuna salad and they were sitting there with alkalized water and crackers with no gluten, whatever. And you don't just walk up to people like, excuse me, guess what? The Lord just spoke to me while I was putting hand sanitizer on in the restroom. And I want you to know everybody in this whole floor is about to be blessed. (laughs) They're going to fire you is what they're going to do. And they should. You're weird. Jesus did not have a spiritual conversation with Simon. He had a business conversation. It was a transaction first. And when Simon saw that Jesus knew what he was talking about, he opened up the rest of his life. Do you know that the greatest witness you and I could have is to be successful at our job? You want somebody to be curious about your walk with Jesus? Be the best at what you do where you are. Be on time. Get there early. Stay late. Be humble. Celebrate other people's victories. Don't be that person. Oh, they got a promotion. That's good. That's so nice. (laughs) Because when you're able to celebrate others, I promise you, Jesus is somewhere sending fish in your direction. Do you want to be a fisherman or do you want to hang with the one who made the fish? So Jesus is watching all these fish come into the net. Simon's like, James, John, get over here. We got fish, man. They're like, man, I'm not coming back. I've been out here all night. I'm I'm going home. I'm hot. I'm sweaty, you know, and I got fish. He brings them out. Both of them are filled. Simon realizes I'm in the presence of greatness. I'm in the presence of something divine. When's the last time you felt the divine touch of God on your business, at your job? Please understand that you are not just natural, you are spiritual as well. And my prayer for you is that you will tap in to the spiritual part of who you are so that as, so that as you continue to grow and develop in whatever field of endeavor you are called to, you will not miss the fact that you were purposed to be there. The same way that Kirk Perry is purposed to be out there in the Silicon Valley area, not far from the San Francisco 49ers who have beat my beloved Bengals twice in Super Bowl 16 and 23, but I'm not bitter. Yes, I am. I hope they all have gas every Sunday for the rest of the year, but I'm not bitter. He's purposed to be a hiccup, an anomaly, a fresh wind in an organization that may not have that type of example. What is your calling where you are? I know you know what you do, but are you doing what you're called to do? Simon, when he catches these fish, he says, You got to get away from me. I I don't even deserve to be in your presence. Just, I'm a sinner. Jesus says, don't don't, don't worry. Don't feel that way. From now on, you're going to catch men. Jesus took 12 regular dudes. And he built his organization with his absence in mind. That is a supernatural CEO. Not one who wants to build a legacy that reminds you of himself. But Jesus said, it's better that I go so the comforter can come. Let me choose 12 dudes that once I pour into them for three years, 
They will be so on fire for purpose that they will lay down their lives and their gifts for something greater than themselves. Now, am I telling you to quit your job and go into full-time ministry in the hood? No. But if that's what God tells you to do, do it. But I believe you're better served being amazing where you are. If you're a business owner, then my prayer for you is that the Lord will multiply your revenue and your bottom line by 30-fold in the next 12 months. My prayer is that growth will be supernatural so that even the most uh, conservative people will have to say there's something different about her. There's something different about him. My prayer is that after you leave here, you'll understand that sometimes God doesn't want you polished. He wants you unpolished, rough around the edges. Me, what am I doing running a business? I grew up on Dana Avenue. I went to Withrow High School, double diploma in lunch and gym. But I let down my nets for a catch because I realized that my gifts by themselves are good. But my gifts in the hands of the master are supernatural. So now here I get to stand on stage with John Maxwell with his premium anointing, 50 million books sold and all these other people. And I'm sitting up here with water from some lady's purse And I asked God, Lord, why did you send me here? I didn't go to Harvard Business School. I didn't even go to MTA School of Truck Driving, where in six easy weeks, I'd be on my way to a promising career. <laughs> I'm like, when, when, when Brian was like, yo, man, I want you to come to the conference, I'm like, why? But when I see him and how God uses him and when I see what God is doing in here with all of you, it makes sense to me. He sent me here as an example. I came from a small idea that I was going to use my gifts of comedy and music, and I had a heart to do film, and I was going to maximize it. And God took that and turned it into television shows, award-winning films. I've worked with Tyler Perry. I've I've done all of these other things, and now uh, there's this huge TV thing that you'll hear about probably in the next four weeks. And you'll be like, hey, I saw that guy. He was at Crossroads. I'm like, mm-hmm, you should have been nice to me. But um, <laughs> there's no way that I would be here had I not launched out into the deep. And don't let down one net. Let down every net. Let go of what you think you know. Defy that thing in you that says, God, I got this. Let him have that too. Whatever the that too is, let him have it. Because I'm living a miracle life. I am living the Forrest Gump life. Connecting with people that there's no way that I should be there. But I trusted that Jesus knew how to get me to destiny better than my own skills. And now my business is going to be for the first time this year, I'm going into the seven figures. Now, for some of y'all, it's like, <laughs> we do that every week. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's a big deal for me because I have six employees. So that's a big deal because I came from nothing. And to watch God go from nothing to seven figures is a miracle. Now, my tax situation, see, the way it's connected to my savings account and my checking account and then my accountant, that's not what I take home because I got folk that I have to pay. But this was the key. Every single thing that I'm doing is helping people. Every single thing that I'm doing is, is sowing into somebody's spirit. There's an eternal seed. Jesus was not interested in simply being excellent in marketplace ministry. He wants people who understand that you have a twofold purpose to be excellent at what you do, but also be excellent in who you are. Jesus took 12 regular dudes and turned them into the organization that is now called the global church. 
regular marketplace ministers, fishermen, tax collectors, hardworking folk, natural in their skill set. But when he got finished, they were supernatural and they were able to multiply. May the Lord begin to multiply you on your job. May he multiply his heart in you for your business. May you get a fresh revelation of why God chose you in the first place. Nothing but nets. Jesus is getting ready to open up multiple opportunities for your business to expand in ways that you could have never imagined. But may this not just be about, "Ah, I can take it easy now, I got a little more revenue. May it now stir your heart to say, if you bless me like that, who do you want me to sow this into? Where do you want me to give this portion? What can I do to help someone else? This is that season. People are hurting and they need hope. And they need business leaders and entrepreneurs and people who are the tastemakers and cultural icons, not just to be about yourselves, but to be about the business of the kingdom in such a way that every single thing that comes into your hands reflects the heart you have of humility and thanksgiving for what Jesus has given to you. Jesus chose Simon because he was the one that stayed out the longest and came into the shore the latest. He's looking for the hard workers, but your hard work alone can only reap so much, but your hard work with his anointing can turn this world upside down. Let me pray for you all the business leaders, if that's okay. Thank you. Father, in this room are multiple nets, brilliant minds, people filled with wisdom, amazing ideas, successful, and some getting ready to go into explosive success. But my prayer is that as you observed the two boats, you saw the ones that were working the hardest and were washing their nets, even though they had caught nothing, they still had hope for tomorrow. Strengthen every person here. Give them hope for the areas where they have not yet seen fruit and then speak to them and tell them to do something crazy and unorthodox to bring about results that they could never get on their own. Take our natural Put your super on top of it and then turn our minds, our hearts and our lives upside down. And as you bless us and resource us, would you give us a heart for those behind us and those around us? Because the greatest thing you did, Jesus, is not make a name for yourself, but you fought to leave a legacy for the church didn't grow until after you died. That is the power of real leadership, that you prepared the disciples for your absence, not your presence. And may we as leaders and entrepreneurs fight to build legacy, that once our season is finished in a certain area, our fragrance, our character, and our integrity will remain. And may those be the nets that catch whatever's connected to our lives. This is my prayer for my new friends in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys.